Hello and welcome to another daily devotion from Hope Lutheran Church. Today we're finishing up Genesis chapter 38 and there's a, there's a lot that happens. So I want you to listen in as I read. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of those cisterns. We can tell our father, a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let us not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe that he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to these Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Sometime later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. Then he went back to his brothers and lamented, The boy is gone. What will I do now? Then Joseph's brothers killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in its blood. They then sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph was clearly torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his robes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son, he would say, and then he would weep. Meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was captain of the palace guard. Well, you may have considered selling your sibling to some traders coming through the neighborhood as you were a child, but of course you never did that. Uh, and you wouldn't really have done it, but these guys actually did. They were so angry with Joseph, they were ready to kill him. And they were willing to just, oh, well, yeah, we won't kill him. We'll just, I mean, after all, he's our brother. We couldn't kill him, but... Sell him into slurry free. Yeah, we could do that. Get 20 pieces of silver. Uh, now, there's a lot in here that should be pointing us forward to things later in the story. Um, and especially, really pointing forward to Christ. Because what we have here is one coming to his own, being mistreated by them being beaten, you know, being, uh, having his robe taken 
by them being sold for pieces of silver. All of this is pointing forward to Christ. Uh, and what we'll find as we get further in the story with Joseph is uh, it really is summed up quite well when Joseph says, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. That was true in Joseph's situation with his brothers. That was also true with the situation of Christ suffering in our place. Uh, so we can look at this and we can recognize that uh, in some of these difficult circumstances, God is still at work. It may not look like it, but he is indeed at work behind the scenes. Right, Bo? All right. God's blessings. Have a great day. I look forward to spending more time in God's word with you again next week.